All right, y'all, we're breaking down on today's show the top 15 free agents on offense. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. If you guys haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that big red button. So we're going to work our way from one all the way down to 15. And at number one, it really should not surprise anybody. He's been number one on this list for two straight seasons. It's Dak Prescott. Tagged by the Cowboys last year. I actually expect him to be tagged once again, and Dallas is going to have to pay him $37 million. However, the Cowboys, they claim they want to pay Dak, and they claim that they believe he's the answer, yet nobody has gone ahead and actually got this deal done. A lot of times when a quarterback this talented is a free agent for this long, if you will, or his team hasn't committed to him, it's a really head-scratching thing. I don't know what the Cowboys are doing. I think they're playing this really, really risky game now at Chicken. Somebody might just – I'll tell you what. If he does hit the free agent market and they don't tag him, you're going to see some crazy, crazy numbers for Dak Prescott. And Dallas is really going to wish that they would have paid him because they're going to have to pay him a lot more if he hits the free agent market. So if you guys love the NFL, Chat Sports is your place to go for free agency updates. Man, we're like two weeks away. No, we are two weeks away from free agency starting on March 17th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Tampering starts 48 hours prior to that. We're going to be making live videos. We're going to be making videos galore about NFL free agency. So subscribe today. That way you don't miss a thing. At number two, it's Allen Robinson, the top free agent wide receiver in my opinion. For whatever reason, Chicago, they've decided to not pay A-Rob. They've paid a whole bunch of other players. He deserves to play with a good quarterback. I mean, we're talking about a dude who's played with Blake Bortles, Mitch Trubisky, and Nick Foles. I still think that Chicago should at least franchise tag him, but you just never know exactly what they're going to do. He's a consistent receiver, had over 100 catches last year, 1,250 yards. He can also block. He is a do-it-all receiver out of Penn State at age 27. Allen Robinson, he's number two here on my list. At number three, actually another player from Penn State, shout-out to PSU, Chris Godwin. Bucks, for whatever reason, they don't want to lose Godwin, and I don't really blame him. He's coming off a Super Bowl title, and as soon as they won the Super Bowl, all the reports came out that said they're going to end up bringing him back. But here we are. We're still waiting on a deal to get done. Sure, he pairs great with Mike Evans, and some people might say Evans is the number one. I'm going to sit here and tell you that I think Chris Godwin is the best receiver on that Buccaneers team. Another franchise tag candidate, no doubt about that. The issue for Tampa is like, they have a lot of players who they could tag. They have a lot of players who are also very talented on the defensive side of the football. He's coming off a year where he didn't have as much numbers as he did in 2019, battled some injuries, but at age 24, this is a player that the Buccaneers should bring back. Three wide receivers in the top four. Yes, sir. Kenny Galladay at number four on my list. Missed most of last season with just a whole bunch of different injuries. He had a hamstring. He had a hip. But when he is healthy, he is a legit number one wide receiver. He definitely could be franchise tagged, but the Detroit Lions actually just made a pretty interesting move. They went out and they signed Tyrell Williams. So if you're Detroit, maybe this could be foreshadowing either you moving on from Marvin Jones or you moving on from Kenny Galladay. The bottom line is this. If you can guarantee me you're going to get 15-plus games from Galladay, he's one of the best red zone options. He led the NFL in touchdowns in 2019, receiving touchdowns, that is, with 11. Talented player, young as well, still got a lot to grow into. But who's the best free agent wide receiver? Go down in the comments section let me know. We got Allen Robinson at two on my list, Chris Godwin at three, Kenny Galladay at four. If you disagree with me, it's all good. These shows are about AR for Allen Robinson, CG for Chris Godwin, or KG for Kenny Galladay. At number five, it's Trent Williams. And sure, he's older, and he sat out in 2019. But I actually think he was the best offensive tackle in the entire National Football League last year and the top left tackle on the market. All reports are that the 49ers want to bring him back, but we've been hearing that for months. There hasn't really been too much update on it, so it's starting to be out there like maybe he might actually hit the market. And if I'm Trent, if I'm his camp, I try to get a big-time con like a big fat contract because this is probably his last chance. 32 years old, he's going to be 33 coming up here pretty soon. I get that he played in 14 games. He allowed four sacks. But if you're an NFL team and you need a left tackle, Trent Williams should be number one on your list. That is if he actually hits the free agent market. Number six is Brandon Scherf, offensive guard for Washington. He's one of the best offensive guards in all of football. He is outstanding in the running game. He's also above average in the pass game as well. He was tagged by Washington last year. It's not going to happen this year. But if you want to be a football team that wants to just – established dominance, especially in the running game. I mean, look at this man. If this man, he might not even have to wear a helmet because that is like the definition of intimidation. 
29 years old, missed 16 games over the last three seasons, and sure, has dealt with a few injuries, but they're all been kind of major, or they've been nothing major, little minor injuries here. So number six on my list, it's Brandon Scherf, offensive guard for Washington, 29 years old, and still can just really, really eat you up on the inside. One of my favorite players on this list at the running back position, it's Aaron Jones. His efficiency continues to go up and up. And when I first saw Jones come out of college, I was like, okay, out of UTEP, I was curious to see what he could be. And he has just blown everything out of the water for me. He is extremely athletic. He can run between the tackles. He can catch the football. Last season, had a very, very good year. Those numbers aren't actually right. Over 1,000 yards. He also had 40-something catches. Jones is one of the best running backs in all of football. The issue is, though, how much do you want to pay a running back? Like, how much are you going to go out and pay him? Because you got all these top running backs. I mean, Zeke kind of ruined it for you. Sure, King Henry's been great. Chris McCaffrey got hurt. I'm personally team don't pay a running back. But if there's a team out there that wants to throw him a lot of money, it's something to keep in mind. So who are some other top free agent backs here? Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson, Leonard Fournette, James Conner. This is my top five. There's obviously other big-name guys as well, like uh, Leonard Fournette. You got Tevin Coleman about to hit free agent market as well. Mike Davis, who filled in phenomenal for Christian uh, McCaffrey. I'm trying to think, Lin uh, Philip Lindsay as well. There's a lot of free agent running backs, but it's Aaron Jones. He's just the clear cut number one, in my opinion. St. Patrick's Day, y'all. It's right around the corner. And if you're trying to get lucky, hey, maybe if you go out and get a few Guinnesses in you, it might help you. Or if you're really trying to get lucky, we got some awesome deals going on chatsports.com slash St. Patrick's where you can get a whole bunch of gear. Some of this is on sale. Some of it isn't. It literally just depends on which gear is available. I can't tell you what it is, so just go check it out for yourself. It's at the link that y'all see below. I'm going to put it in the comments and in the description. But if you need a t-shirt, long sleeve, there's socks, there's hats, literally anything. I don't know about you. I'm always the guy that sits there on March 16th trying to find something green to wear before I go out on St. Patty's Day. We're just going to take care of you here. Get your favorite NFL team. Got a whole bunch of different gear. Small all the way up to 4XL, I believe. It might even be 5XL. It's at chatsports.com slash St. Patrick's Day. Go ahead and celebrate. We all deserve it after this year. Number eight, it's Joe Tooney. He continues to play at a high level. Not quite as good as Scherf, but is definitely a solid left guard in the National Football League. And if you need a left guard, he's probably the top guy here on my list. He's going to get a lot of... Uh, We'll say a lot of offers thrown his way for the simple fact of you know exactly what you're going to get. He is going to be reliable in the running game, going to be reliable in the passing game, and in his five-year career, he has never missed a game. And for the offensive line play, you're going to really be able to go out and find a lot of different, a lot, a lot of different players here where it's hard to find a guy like Tooney who, like I said, literally never has missed a game in his entire five-year career. He can get it done in the run, can get it done in the passing game. It's just going to be really curious to see who's going to go out and give him a bigger contract. Number nine on my list, it's Will Fuller. So as you guys remember, I had a lot of receivers early on. Fuller now is number nine. So he had a breakout year before suspension, was finally able to stay healthy. But if you're Houston and you truly want to be able to keep Deshaun Watson happy, you keep him. I mean, you got to figure out a way to bring this guy back. 53 catches, 879 yards, eight touchdowns. He's got elite speed. The biggest issue and the biggest question with Fuller has always been is, can he stay healthy? Now, maybe the uh, PEDs helped him stay healthy. We'll see how good he is next season. But still, if you're telling me I'm going to get a solid 16 games out of him, he definitely deserves to be top 10, at least free agents on offense. <clears throat> so go ahead and let me know here in the comment section who's the most overrated free agent on offense Go ahead and call him out. I'm always curious what you guys have to say. And actually, the most overrated free agent, I actually think on my own personal list, is the guy coming up right now. It's Juju Smith-Schuster at number 10. He's got four years of NFL experience at only 24 years old, which is obviously very impressive. The last two seasons, though, they just have not been all that good. You could put some blame on Ben Roethlisberger. You could also definitely put some blame on him as well. He's battled some injuries. But... The debate always was when he first came out as a rookie in 2017, he was phenomenal. 2018, 111 catches, over 1,400 yards. People were like, wow, could this be the next best young receiver? Then Antonio Brown left, and now I'm sitting here saying, I don't actually think he is a true number one receiver, but he can be a 1B. The other issue is when you're talking about a big-name receiver, what are you exactly going to pay him? Because I'm going to pay 
Will Fuller. I'm going to pay Kenny Galladay, Godwin, Allen Robinson. I am okay paying all those guys over 16 mil. I'm actually not okay paying Juju that, that type of money. But he is young. He's a good receiver. There's going to be a lot of teams vying for him. Number 11 on my list here, my top free agents on offense, it's Corey Lindsley. He's the best center on the market, so if you're an NFL team out there and you're looking for one of the top centers, if you have the money, go out and spend big. He's been a top center not just in 2020, but over the last three seasons. And if you don't agree with me, also Pro Football Focus has him listed as the top three center the last three years. He did miss three games last season with a knee injury, but he's going to be healthy. He's going to be a solid player, and he's going to be a staple of an offensive line and if you really do want to win in the NFL, I am still a believer that, sure, you need to have a quarterback, no doubt about that. But you need to also be able to win in the trenches, and Lindsley can do that. He saw it in the running game, saw it in the pass game. So for a lot of these teams out there that maybe have unhappy quarterbacks to offensive line, maybe you can go in and bring in a guy like Lindsley. The only tight end on my list, it's Hunter Henry, because I do agree that he is the best free agent. Uh, tight end on the list. You you could potentially throw in a guy like Jonu Smith. I just didn't quite feel comfortable doing that. He's never played a full 16-game season, though, in his five years. Missed all 2018 with an ACL tear. He was franchise tagged last season. When he's on the field, you can see the athletic ability. And, I mean, you could see it as a rookie. As a rookie, he had eight touchdowns. Now, last year, the quarterback play, I thought, of Justin Herbert was a lot different than Phillip Rivers. He had actually a pretty good connection with Rivers. But Herbert also was able to get him involved as well. 60 catches, 613 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, we're talking about back-to-back -back years, over 55 catches for a tight end. Only 26 years old. Curious to see where he could potentially go. If I was the Chargers, I actually would rather bring him back instead of a guy like Mike Williams. 13 here on my list, it's Taylor Motten. If you're looking for the top offensive tackle under 30, it's Motten. If you're looking for the top right tackle, I also agree that it's Taylor Tons of playing experience and only 24 and only 26 years old, excuse me. Three straight seasons as well, over a thousand snaps. Now, I think one of the hardest things to be able to do is find a offensive lineman who you know is going to suit up and play every single week. And not only play, be super reliable. Plus, when you talk to a lot of the teammates from Carolina, they love Martin. He's a fun guy on the field. He's going to push you to get better. And I don't know quite the contract he's going to require. But I am curious to see if you go out and see what Trent Williams is going to get. I actually think a guy like Mont's going to get it. not a lot less, but definitely a considerable amount less. So show him some love here. Who's the most underrated free agent on offense? Now, maybe it's somebody that I don't even have on this list. That's okay. I actually, one of the names that it, it pained me to not put him in my top 15 was Curtis Samuel. He's a receiver that I like a lot out of Carolina. 77 catches last year. Great speed, four years of experience at only 24 years old. And so if you have somebody in mind, let me know. Most underrated free agent on offense. Number 14, it's Corey Davis. Coming off his best year ever for the Tennessee Titans. That's not really debatable in my opinion. However, he hasn't quite lived up to the expectations of being the number five overall pick out of Western Michigan. Both sides, they apparently want to work out a deal, but I mean, we'll see what ultimately happens here. Davis is somebody who can block. He's a solid route runner. He's a bigger receiver. But the hype was a little bit too high. And it, I was always curious if it was maybe the Titans. But A.J. Brown came in and showed that, hey, he's the true number one receiver there. And that's kind of where they've shifted their attention. But a receiver with 65 catches, 984 yards, and a run first offense is definitely something to pay attention to. Number 15, it's Ryan Fitzmagic here, the second best quarterback behind Dak Prescott. If Dak does go to the Cowboys, which I anticipate him sticking with Dallas, that makes Fitz the number one guy on the market. So if there's a lot of NFL teams out there that are thinking, hmm, who's that stopgap quarterback? Who's that veteran QB that can maybe take us to the next level? I think it could be Fitz Magic, who I anticipate him getting over $10 million. And when you go back and look what he did last year, yo, he, he was good. Top five in the NFL in terms of QBR. And, I mean, we're talking about over a lot of really talented quarterbacks. Sure, when you see the numbers, 13 touchdowns, 8 picks, 2,091 yards, you're like, wait a minute, that's only in 9 starts, though. He also came in multiple times for Tua and kind of had to clean things up there in Miami to keep them in the hunt. 38 years old, I get it, has played with a bunch of different teams, but he is number 15 on my list. So we're going to go through these guys one more time, my top 15 free agents on the offensive side of the football. As always, if you disagree with me, 
it's all good. That's what Chat Sports here is all about. If you look below, it can see it said turn on your notifications. It also says hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRan365 if you disagree with my list. At Chat Sports, we're always trying to get to see what you guys have to say and who you have to think about. And as a reminder, let me know who the most underrated, most overrated free agent is on my list. And if you disagree with any of my top 15, my DMs are open for a reason. So slide in them. Let me know if you have any other questions you want to hit me up with. I'm at Mitchell Renz 365.